Hi guys. So uh, today we are doing a lesson, uh, lesson four, states of matter, and I apologize for getting this in so late. Um, so uh, before you continue, make sure you have watched the video, what is the world made of, and uh, print out this states of matter. There's another one uh, up on the site. It's uh, states of matter and it's a visual, it's this picture here, so you can look at it, or you can print it out if you want to, that's optional. So today, you're going to need a empty glass or cup, you're gonna need a straw, you're gonna need a glass or cup that has water in it, preferably something that is not the same size or shape as the other. You're gonna need a rock, that's right, you need a rock, and a balloon, uh, not blown up yet, um, you're going to blow it up during class. You're going to fill it up with air. Um, and also a piece of paper so you can write down your notes. So that means you're going to need a writing utensil too. So make sure you have all of those things before you move on. Pause this video and we will uh, see you when you get back. So you should have all of your materials and um, I want you to get out your piece of paper and your pencil and I want you to, to uh, look at the world around you. Everything you take in with your senses has a form of chemistry behind it. As you study the different sciences, you will be able to see how they are all actually related to each other. For example, as you study chemistry, you will be laying a foundation to help you further understand biology. Learning and applying mathematics will help you better understand physics. Most importantly, in studying sciences, you will hopefully gain a greater appreciation for God's creations, a greater respect for his wisdom, and a desire to take time to ponder the awe-inspiring small details of every part of his creations. So what I want you to do is spend a few minutes to simply observe your surroundings, whether you're indoors or outdoors. I want you to get a, your lined paper and I want you to write down some of the things that you can see around you. And you can stop the video now and write some of the things that you see on your paper and come back to the video. Solids, liquids, and gases are the three classic states of matter. Uh, I hope you remember what matter is. You should have the vocabulary word up on your science wall and be reading it every day to remind you that it is any substance that has mass and takes up space. Matter describes everything around you. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Remember the term mass rather than weight. It is usually used when referring to the measurements taken on a scale in a laboratory. Often using the unit, do you remember what unit? A measurement, grams. Most of your surroundings take on a state of matter like solid, liquid, or gas because matter is made up of tiny particles. The clouds, the grass, the air, your food, your body are all made of matter. Matter is made up of tiny moving particles that are too small to see. One small grain of sand is made up of more than a billion of these particles. These particles are called atoms and atoms can join together to form particles called molecules. We will define and discuss atoms and molecules in more detail in another lesson. For now, any of the words particles, molecules, or atoms will be used when talking about the tiny particles that make up matter. So, Look around you in the room that you're in, or if you're outside, or wherever you are, I want you to look at it and point to it. Well, that's matter. 
and it is made up of particles, atoms, and molecules. So hopefully you went outside and you got yourself a rock. Okay, this is kind of a, an ugly looking rock, but it's one nonetheless. Um, so get your rock and um, I want you to hold your rock. Put it in your hands, I want you to touch the rock. Solids often feel hard to the touch and they have a definite size, shape, and volume. A definite size and shape means you could measure how big it is and say what shape it resembles. Solids are made of small particles of molecules that are rigidly held together. They're held very close together. The molecules do not move around freely. They can only vibrate. That's why a solid, like this rock, or the one in your hand, has a specific shape and its shape is not easily changed. Okay, so liquids. A liquid is free flowing and will take the shape of the container it is in. The molecules that make up liquids have more energy to move around. So they are not as rigid as, as solids, Liquid molecules are able to move past each other because there is a little more distance between them. Because of these characteristics, we know that liquids have a definite volume, but no definite shape. So I want you to get your straw and um, I want you to take a few sips of your drink of water. You should have nice fresh yummy water in a glass and I want you to observe how the liquid changes shape as it changes its container. So liquid will basically be the same shape as the cup and change the shape of the straw when drawn up, right? A solid cannot do this. A solid cannot change its shape to fit its container. If you try to suck up a solid through a straw, it will not change its shape. Even if you were to suck up powder through a straw, it may appear to flow, but each individual crystal within the powder has a definite shape and volume that does not change. So now, I want you to pour the remainder of the water in from this cup that you just drank water out of. I want you to pour the water into the empty cup that you should have. And hopefully it's a different size, different shape cup or glass. Now, I want you to notice how the liquid took the form of the new container, thereby changing shape but the volume is still the same. It still takes up the same amount of space. It is just in a different shape. Okay, so now you're gonna need your balloon and hopefully if you have one, if you don't have one, then I want you to imagine one in your head. Gases are sometimes difficult to see. Compared to solids and liquids, gas particles move quickly because they have the highest amount of energy and are much farther apart. Since they can spread out, they will fill up the entire space that they are in. So I want you to start to blow air into your balloon. What state of matter is entering the balloon. Well, it's not a solid and it's not a not a liquid. And so it's a gas. Air is a type of gas. The air that came from your lungs is now occupying all the space inside the balloon. The air takes the shape of the balloon. Also, 
Since the balloon is made out of a material that can stretch as gas is added, the container will also expand and the air will continue to fill the space. So now I want you to release the air from the balloon. As air is released from the balloon, the particles are dispersed into the air around us and will eventually fill that space. Air fills up all the space in the room that we are not occupying. So every time we move, we change the shape of the air. Because of these characteristics, we see that gas has no definite volume or shape. It changes its shape and volume depending on what container it's in. Because the particles, made up of atoms and molecules, of gas are spread so far apart, there's a lot of free space between the particles. This makes gas easily compressible, which means you can squish it, and you can squish those particles closer together. So now I want you to partially fill your balloon up again and then tie it shut. That means partially means not completely, not like this picture here. You're gonna like think that you're making some sort of little squishy. And uh, so it should be like maybe the size of your hand. And I want you to tie it shut after you put that much air into it. Um, and then you can, um, you know, squish it and manipulate the size and the shape of the balloon. Keeping in mind that the concept of gas molecules are freely moving inside.